And we are rolling. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. My name is Serena, and today I am presenting you my Hong Kong vlog. I do these a little different. I talk a lot, so just prepare for it. Before you're wondering, I'm matching my microphone. <laughs> so I lost the sponge that goes on these. So I DIY'd another solution out of a actual cleaning sponge. We can call him SpongeBob, the microphone. Micro SpongeBob, Sponge Micro Bob. The mushroom micro SpongeBob. Anyways, as I was saying, I'm here to talk to you about why I went to Hong Kong for three days. It all started three weeks ago when my mother, actually it started farther than that. It all started 24 years ago when my mother gave birth to me and my sister, but we're not going to talk about her. Okay, I think we have to fast forward a little bit. My mom is a flight attendant for um, the Swiss airline. Swiss? And she basically has the opportunity to take people on flights with her. So for you, a few weeks ago, she told me that she is flying to Hong Kong. And I love Hong Kong. I studied there for a year. Me and that city, we're like this. We love each other. Okay? So I was stoked. So I asked her whether I could come. And she was like, sure, honey, you can try. And I did. I actually was able to get two flights there and back for 150 Swiss francs, which I actually didn't pay. My mom paid for him. Yeah, so I just flew there for free, I guess. But the annoying part about it was that I had to fly standby, which meant that you could get a business class seat or a jump seat. If you don't know what a jump seat is, well, it's those seats that like, they're not really seat. They're just like on the wall, I guess. And then you can like pull them down. And you know, if you leave, they jump back up. That's why I call it jump seat. I actually had to make a COVID test. Luckily, it was negative. I took a picture of it. I even took the test with me. Nobody cared. Nobody asked me about my COVID test. I then boarded the flight after waiting hours of a confirmation whether I could actually go on the flight or not. But the crew was super nice. They were like, yeah, sure, we'll take her on jump seat. She can come with us. And I was hoping so bad that we had sh no shows. I was just hoping that some people would miss their flight. Unfortunately, all of them made it. It was fine. I was sitting on that jump seat. I had the best time, okay? The face of happiness. Now, the great thing about sitting on a jump seat is that it was a window seat. I had a little tiny window to look out and you know what? The sunrise was beautiful. It looked great. I loved it. And there were some mountains there as well. I don't know which mountains those are. I thought maybe the Himalaya because they kind of look tall, like big. But I'm really bad at geography, so don't count me on it. And then I landed. And let me tell you, I was so happy to be back. Hong Kong, my city. Ooh, hoo, hoo. I actually got picked up by a friend of mine um, who worked at the airport. Clement, shout out to you. Thank you so much for picking me up because um, I would probably have been very lost. Don't get me wrong. I know my way around Hong Kong, MTR and stuff. I just came from a 12 hour flight and like I didn't really have the possibility to sleep. I was just like hanging on that chump seat. It was not relaxing. I was pretty sure I only had two brain cells left. Yeah, I was really thankful somebody picked me up. Hi. Wow, look at the train. Isn't that great? Yeah. Welcome to Hong Kong. Woo! <laughs> so my plan was basically to stay at my good friend Paul's for one night and then go to the hotel where um, the Swiss crew was staying. So I would was able to stay with my mom in her hotel room. We went straight to Paul's and um, we went for dinner. We then went back to Paul's rooftop and we ended the night with watching Naked Attraction. Which, if you don't know that TV show, honestly, you're missing out. I I think it's really entertaining. But also, I don't want to comment on it because, um, yeah, just Google it yourself. And the next morning. Hello and good morning. I am in Hong Kong. I've landed yesterday at 5. Went to bed at like 1 slept until one so that's good 
some might say it's a little bit of a waste of a day because well you know late start but i say i'm jet lag so it's fine so day number one that was or i guess day number two but like so Monday, I had a pineapple bun for breakfast and then headed straight to Central, which is where I met two of my oldest friends. Okay, I have no idea if you can hear me, but I am on my way from Happy Valley to Causeway Bay, which is just from one place in Hong Kong to another, I guess. I'm planning to meet up with uh, two friends of mine. And you know what? Walking through Hong Kong is so nice. It's so beautiful i mean it's a little rainy which is why i stole this umbrella no idea who it, who it belongs to but the good thing about that is i can just leave it somewhere and somebody else will find it hopefully So we went to the IFC building, which is the second highest building in Hong Kong. It has like a hundred and something floor. Hold on, let me check that. IFC building floor. 88 floors. Cool. I was trying to. Hi. You want to say hi? Hello. Welcome hi. to Hong Kong. Thank you. <laughs> So we were able to go up all the way to the 55th floor where the exhibition was. We didn't really look at the exhibition, to be honest. Uh, we just talked. <laughs> I had to catch up with some people. It was important. I haven't seen these people in two years. I have no idea what they've been up to. No, no, it's just a hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you Welcome again back. as well. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. After that, we made our way to a coffee and I spontaneously asked a friend of mine <laughs> you know, whether she wants to join. And it's so funny because Hong Kong is just such a place where people, it, it's funny because people always seem to make time. And I appreciate that a lot. We're at Elephant Grounds to get some coffee. So we were at a cafe and we just hung around a little bit. It was lovely. Lovely. And after that, we went for dinner. Was it just an old person taking a nap or something? I don't think so. It was a young guy saying something. We actually stayed in the restaurant until after it closed. The lady that worked there, she just asked us whether we could put the wine glasses like to the side so they won't fall off the table. And she also gifted us a free wine. I'm telling you, people in Hong Kong are just so nice. Hello, I just want to get a very quick update. We have just had dinner um, and it was great. It was really lovely. I'm now getting back to Paul's place, grab my stuff and then go to the Kowloon side. It's the other side, dark side. And then I'll meet my mom in her hotel. But I kind of need to leave. Hong Kong on a Monday evening is very, it's not a lot going on. It is very, slowed down it's kind of nice actually so we took the tram back to Paul's place I packed my things hopped in a taxi and then drove to the other side just call it the other side it makes it sound so mysterious yeah and then I went to bed at like 2 and I couldn't sleep for God's sake I couldn't sleep because I slept 12 hours the night before so I slept 4 hours the night after that and the next day we went to Macau. Good morning. We're making our way to Macau. I'm at the Grand Harbor Kowloon Hotel where my mom is staying. Let's see how this day goes. I'm so excited. It's, um, I think it's 8.30 in the morning and I'm heading out the hotel now. It's so nice out here. I didn't bring an umbrella, which is uh, maybe my downfall. Um, but I really hope that my friends thought about it. But let me show you the view very quickly. It's so beautiful. Weather is a little bit cloudy. But it's working. It's actually much nicer that way. Um, instead of like super hot sunny days i prefer it kind of and this is the ferry pier we're going to 
um, to catch our ferry to Central, which is all the way over there. The wind is like giving us everything. Waiting for the ferry now, looks pretty empty. <laughs> I made it to the other side. Woohoo! So I have a microphone now that it sounds better. Hi, Gabby. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So nice to meet you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm awesome. loving not today's weather, but overall the weather is amazing here. Finally, warm weather. <laughs> we made it through customs. We're going to the toilet now. <laughs> I really wanted to go Macau ever since I got to be in Hong Kong for the first time. But the last time I was in Hong Kong, um, a pandemic was going on. So it was a little difficult to get there. And the border borders were closed. The thing about Macau is it's actually its own place. So you have to pass borders. So you leave Hong Kong um, and then you have to go through a whole security, not security check-in, but like um, there's a new border before like traveling to Macau. Like Hong Kong, Macau is also a colony, but not a colony from the Brits like Hong Kong was, um, but actually from uh, Portugal. So our first stop in Macau was food. We started quite late. I think we took the ferry at 10.30. Um, so when we got to Macau, it was around lunchtime. And Paul, our guide, knew this place called Fernando's. And this was just a must go to. If you go to Macau, you go and eat at Fernando's because that place is amazing. The food is great, but it's also a really old place. Like the owner has been there for maybe like 50 years and it was great. It was delicious. They had really, really, really good food, bread. Oh my God, they had bread and like actually good bread. Oh my god, I would so feed it, guys. It's nice. Yeah, so good. Wow. Yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> Wait, let me eat it. That's vinegar. No, that's vinegar. 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 That's we took a walk at the beach next to Fernando's. It was a black beach. Actually, it, was, it used to be a black sand beach. I mean, it still was, but I think they now mixed it with like um, normal sand. So it didn't look that impressive anymore. But it was quite nice to be at the beach. I take any opportunity I get to be at the sea because, you know, Switzerland doesn't have an ocean. We have lakes, glaciers that are dying because of climate change because of people who fly to places for only three days and, and increase their CO2 footprint in the world. Yeah, this is really nice. There is a guy building a castle over here. And the beach is black. He was building a castle out of sand, not like a real life castle, just in case anybody got confused. So we headed to a little town to walk around a little bit and already there you could see these beautiful old European-esque buildings. We made a stop at a place that was run by a guy from Argentina. He had really nice arms. They were very muscular. And we got some mate because all of us ate so much food. We were all tired and like it only would have taken seconds for us to literally fall asleep. So we grabbed some mate, popped ourselves up, and then, um, yeah, we kept going. Actually, we had to drag some people out of that shop because, I mean, the guy was really, really cute. And we were a bunch of women and gay men, so nothing really you can do, huh? All right, so we're in the middle of Macau. Um, I think so. Honestly, I have no idea where we're at. But you see this old building there? It looks very much European-esque. And that is because Macau used to be a colony from Portugal. And the very interesting thing about that is that a lot of signs or a lot of street names are actually written in Portuguese and Chinese. So that's fun. Also, I wouldn't think you wouldn't expect to see that here in like the middle of an Asian 
country, I guess. Oh, there's a cat. I love how we just walk. got some tarts some really really yummy yummy egg tarts uh, but Paul can you quickly Hello. explain to me why these tarts are so special well this is the original Lord Stowe's bakery from 1989 um, Macau's most famous egg tart mm -hmm. he was a British guy and he lived here and he um, they say he replaced the water in the recipe with heavy cream and uh, oh. that's why his egg tarts taste so delicious and yeah they're uh, very delicious, so... Alright. Sounds great. Mm. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Everything with a gram. Hello. Hello. Like one oh, like cheers, cheers, cheers. Wow, it's good though. Mm. It's yummy. It's so good. <laughs> it's out of the world. It's amazing. Uncle, Uncle Roger would like it. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Roger would Uncle like Roger. it. Anybody else want to give their opinion? Christina. Delicious. Ooh, ooh. We love the egg tarts. So worth it. Mm. Um, rich and buttery. Yeah. Ooh. Creamy. Eggy. Contrast between all the layers of the crispy pastry yeah. and the custard. It's just right. Thank you very much. Okay, Lucy says buttery, clicking. We love. Conclusion, we love. Hong Kong and Macau both are quite famous for their egg tarts, but the best egg tarts, the best egg tarts in the world, Michelin egg tarts, you'll find in Macau, and they're delicious. It looks like a British cafe, doesn't it? Yeah? Yeah, take a we did go karting. After walking around for a bunch, eating some yummy egg tarts, we made our way back to the actual city center of Macau. Ow and I also, I bought a shirt, I bought two shirts, actually I bought three shirts. One of them was most for Toby, my boyfriend. One of them had egg tarts on them. Gotta keep up the theme. Macau is a beautiful city. I can only recommend anybody who goes to Hong Kong to also stop in Macau. Very few peop people actually go to Macau and stay there for a week because it's just so small. But the people that do, they usually go there for gambling, which is what Macau is known for. It's basically the Las Vegas of Asia. But I've heard that it's a lot bigger. So Macau actually makes much more in revenue than Vegas because of the because of very, very rich Asian people. Well, I would say I, I have to credit like um, Macau for actually being able to keep up with or like keep a lot of the old buildings here. Like Hong Kong did not do that. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm in a European square with a lot of Asian tourists. Like every European country. I took a photo shoot in front of the church. I have like a million pictures from there. So this facade was built in 1802 and it burned down. Right, Paul? It burned down, right? When did it burn down? 18 something, 1834. 
1835. So it only existed for like 33 years. No, 1602 to 1835. 1602. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it was built in 1602 and it was burnt in 1835. Okay, so we got a couple of hundred years in there. That's good, right? That's good. Also, this building is UNESCO. Oh, gosh, yeah. So the whole um, historic core of Macau is considered UNESCO as well. And which, what is the historical core? Like that will all, all will we just look okay. Nothing that we okay. were at earlier. Like this part wow, this that, looks great. Oh, wow. Wait, hold, hold on. So, according to a popular story tale, Na Cha is the third son of Li Jing, the general of the city of Cheng Tan Guan. His mother was pregnant for three years. What? He's known as a bad boy. Ooh. Ooh. Makes, Ooh. I think it makes more sense to go to the Ema Temple, and there's some really beautiful churches and an old theater, and my favorite. Can you climb it again, please? Can you, like, see me through this lattice? Up there. Oops. Oops. Oh, that one. Is that, is that one? <laughs> So, um, what is the street's name? Prostitute. Um, how do you say it in Chinese? Illegal. Prostitute Street. Yeah, I don't think it's called Gay Logan. Illegal now. The shark fins. I don't think it's called Gay Logan. Illegal now. Nobody knows. But it was the prostitute street. Who are the felicidad? And. Oh, so the prostitutes will peek out of those windows. You can't see all of it. Makes sense. Makes sense. But actually. We made a very quick stop at Paul's hotel because he actually decided to stay the night. And then we headed out for our last dinner. Last supper. <laughs> well, it wasn't last supper. It was just like our dinner before we left to go back to Hong Kong. After dinner, we took a cab back to the ferry pier and then from there we went back to Hong Kong by boat again. And I'm on my way back to the hotel. Empty your time. And that was the end of day two. Now comes day three. Good morning. I just woke up and I thought I want to make a very short um, room tour because the room they gave us is very big. So this is the door and then you get in and you have a little area here. Well, big mirror. And this I guess is just some counter, sp counter space. Ooh, it's Inception. Huh, never noticed. I don't know what this is. I think it's for ice. We got a bathroom here. Just a small bathroom. And then here is, I guess this is something like the living room. There's a lot of space here to do workouts. <laughs> I don't know. That's the view. Not too shabby. Yeah, yeah. Bedroom. Hello. Closet. And the bathroom. So, I don't know why they gave us this big of room. I think it was because my mom told them that she was traveling with somebody, so they upgraded us. But I've never stayed in a hotel room that nice. I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous. And I felt bougie. Like, bougie. Like, actually, bougie, rich, bougie. I enjoyed it. Mind you, I didn't pay a penny for it. It was all covered by my mom's travel expense, I guess, because that's just where flight attendants stay my phone's battery ran out so um we're filming part of this right we had a look around at the deck and then we headed to 
lunch with my friends so as I mentioned my mom was with me and I thought it would be really fun for her to meet um, all the people that I spent my time with when I was in Hong Kong we all went to get some dim sum and dim sum is actually a really I guess kind of like traditional food to have in Hong Kong and it's so cool because the more people you are the more fun it is dim sum was delicious and after that we went to the zoo the zoo was closed when I was there the last time because of COVID. So it was really nice to go to the zoo. They had a bunch of different animals. My favorite was the orangutan. It was huge. Humongous. It was at least like 200 kilos, pretty sure. And it just swung there with one arm. Can you imagine how strong that animal must be? I was a little scared, not gonna lie. After that, we walked around and we went to a place where the old prison was and there was an exhibition that basically showed the diet of prisoners from 18 from the late 1900s to now it's actually quite interesting but also a little random so they just showed like the different diets prisoners had uh, from i think 1890 to 2006 it was quite interesting and lastly we went to a cafe we just chit chatted a little bit there um yeah and just like spent some time together before we went back to the hotel to get ready for our flight back so as i already mentioned when flying standby um there's a good chance that you end up flying business class or on a jump seat it can go either way it all depends a little bit on how well the flight is booked and because not a lot of airlines um, are flying to hong kong still usually the flights to hong kong are always overbooked i was pretty sure that i would have to fly back on a jump seat and it was a 14 hour flight they had to adopt the route because we're not allowed to fly over russia anymore so it took longer and i really mentally prepared myself i was like okay i'm gonna pre-sleep like i'm gonna sleep so i'm not gonna be super tired on the flight because you're not able to f to sleep on those jump seats you know what ended up happening i could fly back business class now i was feeling bougie somebody missed their flight and i was so thankful for that <laughs> that just saved me <laughs> flying business class was amazing you got food you got like dinner and then i wake you up for breakfast and then you can like sleep there you got a lot of space oh, it's just great they also had some really nice products in the bathroom this is me giving you guys a tutorial they had like face cream and um face spray please ignore the funny faces i'm making here i'm really not a beauty guru but look at that it looks so beautiful and nice and really clean ha <laughs> perfect for continuing flying huh and they even let me go into the cockpit to see the start and the landing it was dark so i really couldn't see that much but it was still really cool thank you universe also i want to thank my mom for giving birth to me thank you anyways um we landed in zurich uh, I think it was 6.20 or something. I was home by like 7.30. So yeah, all overall it was a great trip. Short, but so adventurous. I had a great time. Felt so loved. It was just great seeing everybody again. I also really enjoyed spending time with my mom. And the crew on the flights were both really, really, really nice. I had an amazing time. And I really, really, really appreciate it how everything turned out yeah so that was it that was me going to hong kong for three days so thank you for watching um i just want to let you know that they have something like a subscribe button down there you don't have to subscribe but might consider it you can also like or dislike the video <laughs> and you can turn on notification i'm pretty sure my mom is the only one who has that so Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. And I see you. Maybe never. Maybe next time. I don't really know. I don't really have an uploading schedule. Who cares? Right? <laughs> All right. Bye. Look. 
Now you just need to speak in it. Like, okay. I don't know if it does anything. I'm trying to hold my breath. Let it say this away. Da 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 da. I forgot the lyrics. Forgive me. Okay, now give it to Paul. Paul needs to do Is this thing on? We don't know. Is this thing on? You can't hear until after. Testing, one, two, three. Yak. E some testing testing. Hello. We gotta do this properly. We gotta do this properly because we outside. <laughs> Serena's back in town. Serena's back in town. She's stuck in some alley besides the supermarket. Why is she only here for a couple of days? That was fun. Thank you very much for being part of my vlog and also for taking me out to dinner. That was very lovely. Appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys. <laughs>